All right, it's episode number six, and today we discuss a cinematic masterpiece. I don't know what other movie podcasts you're listening to, but it's time to drop that zero and get with the hero. Let's go, baby. It's cool as ice. And why are we talking about this? Because bad movies rule. Today, guys, a, a movie that is more than a movie, a movie that transcends filmmaking. This movie changed my life. It's mine too. Let's be honest. The vanilla ice classic cool as ice today. I'm James Hauser, your host, and we're joined by first off Clint Bush. How you doing, Clint? I'm doing fantastic. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Clint's, you know, we haven't really had a chance in any of these episodes to talk about each other, each other at all, but Clint's an interesting guy, a renaissance man, someone who's dabbled in everything from car racing to bank robbery, and now he joins us almost every week on Bad Movies Rule. We're happy to have you, Clint. That was a jewelry store, actually, that was, I robbed. Oh, in, that, in Mummer Man? The she movie? Horn Jewelers. I'm, I'm surprised. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't know that. I wrote that movie, and I don't remember. Okay. Well, it was a long time ago. We're also joined today by none other than Mel Vandy. Mel has been part of our group for, I don't know. A long, long, long time, and it has been our sound guy on all of our film productions. Yeah, it's because my voice sucks. <laughs> He's also dabbled in acting here and there, and one time he sp- sprayed a guy with mace while he was in handcuffs. True story. Well, Saw that it. Was, that was just a Tuesday night. <laughs> Actually, that was like seven or eight times. <laughs> that, was like, that was a lot of times, and then he started punching him. It was great. And then also joining us today is none other than my brother from my same mother, Bob Hauser. How you doing, Bob? Doing all right, man. How are you? I'm doing good. Bob has been with us since our very first film back in 2005. He's been with me since the day he was born, but he's uh, he's been an actor. He's been a writer. He's he's done all kinds of things and oh, an award-winning actor for Psycho Hiker. So congratulations on that. I think we bought that award. Did you buy it? I don't know. Is it's the ongoing joke. No, it was an, it was a legitimate award. At an unnamed festival. I mean, somebody <laughs> buys every award, so. True. <laughs> well, today, guys, I don't know how on earth we got here. Uh, actually, I do know how we got here. We got here because of Clint, and Clint, you demanded we watch you, this movie. You demanded that we give suggestions on movies to watch for bad <laughs> movies rule. That's true. I can't fathom another bad movie that needs, you know, watching. Well, let me give you the vitals. Nobody else saw this, so we need to get the word out. Well, at least four people saw it. Maybe the first four to have seen it in years. Who knows? <laughs> let me give you the vitals for this movie really quick. We have it. Uh, oh, my gosh. People actually got paid to work on this movie. <laughs> <laughs> it was directed by a guy named David Kellogg. Now, is, when, is, when you, you see, did he make the cereal? <laughs> no. When you look at this guy's resume, it was nothing but like, Playboy after dark movies and like a lot of commercials, right? Like lots and lots of commercials. Awesome. That that explains the commercial look. That could be why I like it. (laughs) He still makes commercials, so he still had a long career, but he only made two movies. It was this and the Matthew Broderick led Inspector Gadget movie (laughs) that was also universally hated. So sounds like something I need to go see today. Yeah. And then this was written by David Sten. Now David Sten had a fairly successful TV writing career. He wrote for a lot of different shows. He actually wrote an episode of Boardwalk Empire, one of the best written TV series, at least in my opinion. I love that show. I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen Boardwalk Empire. But, uh, yeah, he wrote this. It's it's his fault. Although I have to imagine Vanilla Ice just made up his dialogue, right? I mean, there's no way he memorized a script. No. No. No way. This, I mean, there may have been some scripting in here, and that guy may have wrote this story. If you look at the underlying actual story for this, yeah. it's not too bad. It's like they could have potentially written a decent movie and then said, you know what? Let's just get Vanilla Ice to do it. Um, like, legitimately, the movie isn't bad. Like, right. the, the script story idea isn't a terrible idea, and it's been done a million times before in a million different ways. It's just their yeah. Vanilla Ice take on it. Because there's no way he, like, sat down at a word processor and said and typed yep, out yep yep she yep. likes yeah, yeah right yeah I girl <laughs> i just can't i'm not gonna give i'm gonna give david the benefit of the doubt and say he didn't write that that stuff on purpose <laughs> i think he wrote say a bunch of stuff <laughs> uh this this is one of my favorite things i discovered this was shot the cinematographer was janusz kaminski now 
Janus shortly after this became steel Steven Spielberg's guy. This guy shot saving private Ryan Schindler's list minority report. Could you imagine? That's all because of the <laughs> ability of him to catch this motorcycle jumping from flat land over a fence in front yes. of a horse perfectly. Yes. I'd say his career went downhill after this. This is a big time <laughs> cinematographer. I wonder if I was, he sitting around, on the set of Saving Private Ryan, going well. You know, back when we were shooting Cool as Ice, how we got this, <laughs> how we got this shot. This is what we need to do here, Tom. And maybe he owed somebody a favor, so he had to do this first. Like, hey, hey, if you want Saving Private Ryan, you got to do this first. He yes. made Spielberg. Apparently, <laughs> this movie starred Vanilla Ice, Deezer D, Kevin McAllister's older sister, and the dad from Family Ties. Perfectly, right? Who uh, I actually reached out to. You reached out to the film to Michael Gross. Yes. Did he get back to you? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Did you mention cool as ice when you reached out to him? I did. That's the mistake then right there. Like, should, you should have <laughs> talked about tremors. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. You should have brought up tremors. This is before tremors. He probably has a, like a word thing, like to block any messages that have cool as ice. <laughs> well, at least this time I didn't get a cease and desist order. That's true. So, so Clint, you got to explain yourself here because you said we wanted this movie because when you were a kid, you loved this film? I love this movie. I probably watched this movie 25 times. I mean, like, that's... On purpose? Intentionally. We had to rent it to watch it. We would rent it on VHS, and we would bring it home and watch it two or three times and then have to return it, and then we'd rent it again another day. You probably spent hundreds of dollars. Why not just buy the VHS? It was a dollar, dude. Come on, man. But I spent literally tens of dollars on this thing. And well, I know, Okay, but... Was it Video Empire or Lion Video? Uh, whichever one was over there by the Globe. Oh my gosh! I can't Asian believe buffet. that your parents allowed this to happen. No, only and no one called. Around. No one called Child Protective Services or yeah, anything. Only when they weren't there. <laughs> I legitimately wanted to be this guy so much. I had a little. Uh, I don't know if anybody knows what a YSR fifty is, but it's a miniature no. crotch rocket, and I used to actually rip this thing around the neighborhood before I had a driver's license at like max speed, just imagining I was in this movie. I remember That's, that. That's <laughs> that's awesome. You wanted to be vanilla ice, so would you like in the shower? In the shower, you would you wrap? Ice. Would you, you do the to dress like? And we've got pictures of it. I never did the hair though, but I did have. So my first exposure to vanilla ice. If you guys, I don't know Bob if you remember this, but back at Antioch Upper Grade, every Friday night they had this dance called Teen Canteen. Yeah, they okay. did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember that. And in sixth grade, that Mr. Oshwat was the DJ. Okay. He was the language arts teacher and he would, there'd be a portion of the night where it'd be a dance contest, right? Where yep. they would judge people would stand up on the, on the, on the stage and people would be dancing. They judge. And, and I got pulled out as, as one of the winners, me and we all did it. Wayne point. Carly. And so I think they just basically took turns saying, well, he hasn't been picked in a while. And right, you know, exactly. like you win. not that we were great dancers. No, we were a school full of people who just universally could not dance. Right. And so you got to pick a single, like a, a cassette single, and it was only like one song on each side, right? right? And I got the vanilla, the Ice Ice Baby tape was the thing that I won from Teen Canteen from well, Mr. Got Oshawa. To, if, if it doesn't, if my memory serves me correctly, because I've won this a couple of times myself, yeah. you got to pick from a couple. So there yeah. was others that you left and took that one intentionally. Oh, yeah. Look, man, I was, like I said, a 12-year-old kid and yeah. vanilla ice. I mean, Ice Ice Baby at, that, at the time was like. I think I took Breaking the Girl. Ooh. Yeah. Right. There Chili you go. Peppers. There you go. I don't think I ever won again. I think I went, you know, another three <laughs> years. Did you really win? Well, <laughs> yes, because it's a memory. I, apparently I've cherished my whole life because I still remember it now. And I don't remember almost anything about what happened back then. Nice. But I remember the day I got that vanilla ice cassette. I wore that thing out. But that doesn't mean I watched Cool as Ice. I remember That's watching just because it because you didn't know about it. No, I, I I watched it. Me and a friend of mine rented it one single time if and we watched it. If we didn't live on the opposite side of that big lake that was really far to ride a bicycle around, you'd yeah. watch this more. Would I have? Absolutely, because you'd have been out there <laughs> riding my YSR fifty and thinking you were cool. All right, maybe that's why this thing just passed me by. How do you guys think this movie? Now I know you know already, but I want to guess. I want to see what what Mel and Bob think. How do you guys think this movie did at the box office? I know it made $78 in rental <laughs> in Antioch alone. Um, the, alone. the, the budget of this movie, which for a big movie at the time or a theatrical theatrical film was $6 million. That's almost nothing for a budget. Mm-hmm. 
One million of that went to went to Vanilla Ice. He got a million dollars for this movie. Okay. At the box office, it made one point two million dollars. <laughs> Can't imagine why. I didn't even know it had a box office. Honestly, I never even saw this thing come through like as a movie at a theater. So, do, you, do you know think, how hard it is? Wasn't his opening weekend like five hundred thousand dollars? But you know how hard it is to not make a profit on a six million dollar movie that gets released theatrically. Like no one has to go see the movie. So you're you not saying that back. this movie isn't great. I'm sorry. And I'm, that you you could probably do better than 1.2 million at a box office if you made a movie then. All I'm saying is the reason that it exists is probably because a studio was like, well, look, Vanilla Ice is hot right now, or maybe he was hot a year ago, and we're only making we're only paying six million for this movie, so that we can't lose, right? There's no way this doesn't make a profit. Well, they shouldn't have bet against Vanilla Ice. <laughs> <laughs> Because it was bad. Well, you know, this film was award winning. Oh, really? What award did it win? Uh, it actually was nominated for seven Razzies. Oh, my gosh. How, did it sweep? Uh, no, no, no. It actually sucked at that, too. <laughs> <laughs> so Vanilla Ice won for Worst New Star, but the movie sucked so bad it lost Worst Picture, yeah. Worst Actor, Worst Director, Worst Screenplay. Well, it was, it was definitely the worst director. I mean... It, it was obvious that the guy directed music videos, right? I mean, be, because it was, it was an three hour music 40. videos. Yeah. It was right. three music videos with a story in the background. Right. And music videos are like traditionally made for people with ADD, right? And a lot of fast cuts and it's like two and a half, three minutes long. And it's like, look at this. Now look at this. Now look at this. And he yeah. kind of made the whole movie that way. Right. It was like the whole first five minutes of the movie. That was completely well, useless. That was the only thing he knew how to do. He started it like with a music video. And then Spaz dance. after That's that, he knew how to do after that, he was totally out of ideas. Five minutes into the movie, he's like, well, I've used all of the knowledge available to me at this point. And for the rest of it, he just made everything like a music video. Oh, we have to introduce this family, this main family. What are we going to do? Uh, I don't know. Shoot it all and fast forward like a music yeah. video. Right. That was actually pretty cool because it's like, why waste all that time character building? That's unnecessary. Right. Like, hey, look, okay. We all know about what they're saying. That was the most obnoxious scene I've ever watched. How the, dare you? The director was just... That was a two-hour movie. We watched it in an hour and 40 minutes. That's just amazing. Now, if I was directing this movie, I would not, I would have, instead of saying cut, I would have said, all right, stop every time. Collaborate. <laughs> stop. And listen. And maybe we would have started off as a joke, right? All right, stop, like the song. But I think like after a couple days, I would have just been like, all right, all right stop, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I end every scene. Just stop. Vanilla, please. Oh, it's so bad. Do you think they called him vanilla on set? Well, they didn't, they didn't call him Robert. I am guessing. Right. I would think so. But I mean, like you, you just call him ice, right? They probably refer to him in the third person, like the talent, <laughs> like get the talent out here. Oh yeah. I don't think that probably happened. If you said, Hey, get the talent out here. Vanilla ice would look behind him and go, who? No, actually he wouldn't. He would say, yep, that's me. It was universally competent. <laughs> this, <laughs> For another casting little tidbit here, you know why they ended up with the older sister from Home Alone, Kristen Winter? Because she's cute. Because every other woman in Hollywood passed on this. Listen to this list of people that were asked and passed on this movie. They went to everybody. Winona Ryder said no. Jennifer Connelly, Drew Barrymore, Shannon Doherty, Jennifer, a pre friends, Jennifer Aniston. She hadn't even broken she through is, with friends and she was like, no, I'm not doing this that's movie. Brilliant. Uma Thurman, Martha Plimpton, the, the nerdy girl from Goonies didn't want anything to do with it. Courtney Cox. Apparently they asked everybody that was going to be in friends that she said, no, coming off of masters of the universe. This wasn't good enough for her. Jenny Garth, Tori spelling. So all of the 90210 girls got asked. They all said, no, they all turned down the role. Lisa Marie Presley said no. She said yes to Michael Jackson and no to cool as ice. And even Gwyneth Paltrow almost took the part until her dad advised her against it. Heard that. Yeah. Dad for the win there. It's nice to see that Hollywood's not whoring themselves out. <laughs> Have some standards. How much does Gwyneth owe her dad for this? one? He's got a, he, he could call in a favor at any time. Yeah. I don't know. I think that, uh, you, you take one of those people and granted you're saying some of them are, you know, pre what starred them. Right. But at the same time, I don't think uh, you put a, a list actual actress on there and you're going to get the same type of corny, goofy, what made this good 
in my eyes. I, I actually Wait. enjoyed. So you're saying you put like a Jennifer Connelly in this movie and the movie is worse for no, it? I'm not saying it's worse for it. I'm saying you're not going to get this guy. There's going to be so much like actual feedback and pushback. You don't get a corny movie. She's going to try and make it better or it's going to just blow up completely on set. It doesn't get made. Yeah, but I got I to gotta imagine that Uma Thurman can't even save this movie like because Vanilla Ice is still going to star in it no matter what. Well, who would they scrape the bottom of the barrel to get him? I mean, did Michael? Yeah, who did they ask down? first? <laughs> uh, Vanilla Ice, believe it or not, was the first choice to play this character. They wrote the script for him, I'm imagining. Oh, I don't see it. <laughs> Bob, who else could have played this part besides Vanilla Ice? Are we talking back then or now? Back then or now. Now, John Cena. <laughs> oh that'd be great but you wouldn't be able to see him so you'd just think she was talking to herself the whole time that's true and the whole time and whole time as these music videos are happening in the movie there's a little and he disappears right yeah all right, before we get into the beats of this movie, I just want to take a moment to thank everybody that's listening. Uh, we do us a favor in whatever podcast provider you use. Will you give us a follow? Give us a subscribe. Uh, that way, when new episodes come out, you'll be notified and you can catch up to us every Friday morning. We're going to be releasing a new episode. Also, if you could leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, if that's what you use, that really helps the show uh, get out there and get noticed by more people. And as you know, podcasts, they live and die by word of mouth. So something else you could do to help us would be to just tell one person about bad movies rule. We would really appreciate it. But more than anything, we're happy that you're tuned in and listening to us talk about cool as ice. Let's get into it. What is this movie even about guys? Well, it's about a guy who was a police officer that, uh, turned in some people he informed on some other police officers. And then he was in Witsec and then uh, his daughter accomplished something and he decided, yeah, I'll go on TV. But apparently the Witsec guy um, didn't tell him that, Hey, the people that you informed against just got out of prison recently and might be in a bar watching this local news channel post this on TV and see you. And then, you know, the bad guys come and kidnap the son and, you know, try and pressure for their money. They want their money. Can I tell you how tired I am of the trope in movies of people finding out information just because they happen to be watching the news? Right. It's so stupid. Like the whole thing is built on like this guy is just happens to be sitting in a, in a, in a, bar, in a, in a bar, bar with who, noise. No one watches the news in a, in a bar and that's how they find the crucial information that propels the entire movie. It's the dumbest trope. Guess I'm not uh, proposing that script. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing it. But is is Vanilla Ice playing himself in this movie? Absolutely. I or, mean, something very similar to himself. I mean, he is a uh, on stage performer. Right. So it's who like he's going from town to town, and their bike breaks down before they get to where they're going. So that's why they get stuck here at this goofy house. This this house is yeah. amazing. Like these really? these the two characters, these two characters in general, like that house, that property, that section of you know neighborhood right there is just an absolute different world of insanity. And I kind of just enjoyed that. We were kids. I mean, you're an old man watching this movie now for the first time last night, you know, and falling asleep before you got to the end. Um, (laughs) I was legitimately a kid watching this movie and I watched it and watched it and watched it and I enjoyed it. And that was just a goofy, odd, bright colored. (laughs) Look at these people. You know, yeah, it was like Pee Wee's playhouse, but if like a couple of old serial killers lived there, Something like it, right? Now that I'd watch. I mean, <laughs> I'm convinced. I want to get back to vanilla in a second here, but I'm convinced that those two people definitely were in their basement eating soup made from people. I mean, it's people. <laughs> but what I want to know is vanilla playing like a fictional. So he's playing like a fictionalized version of himself. Basically. Yeah. So kind of like, kind of like Eminem did like this is vanilla ice is eight mile. Right. Right. Are, are we sure it wasn't written for snow and he just was the guy that we get? <laughs> Well, no, because they Could couldn't be. have another informer in the script was already. A, because the that's what the uh, this is. If this is dad was doing. this is like the Walmart eight mile, right? I mean, this is not. No, actually, they'd be more more like the Kmart eight mile because it, Walmart's still open for business. The <laughs> Lifetime TV version of eight mile. <laughs> I guess this is. I think Vanilla is looking at this movie at the time, even though eight mile didn't exist. This is the same thing he's trying to pull off as what Eminem was trying to pull off with eight mile. It's kind of his story. But not really. It's a fictionalized version of himself, and he thought this was going to blow up and be huge. Oh, it blew up, and it was huge. It was an amazing ad for birth control, I tell you. (laughs) (laughs) 
And he, I think part of the ro- part of the problem is it doesn't age well. Like at least the Eminem movie aged fine, right? I well, mean, it's, it's tough to tell. It hasn't aged as far. Well, when I was mean, that movie it's, made? It's, it's fine now, but this was so much more before. We haven't had a huge, ridiculous style it's, change. It's been 20 years since 8 Mile, has We it? haven't seen a ridiculous, huge style change. At least we haven't noticed it. But, like, you think about the end of the 80s, into the 90s. Yeah. The ridiculous colors, the shaving your, you know, Look, eyebrows. The brick your, wall on the side of your head. Bricks. Yeah. Listen. I mean, Girls cannot withstand the bricks. They melt. They turn into butter when they see the bricks. I was okay. actually going to go and get my hair done like this for this day just for you guys, <laughs> but I chickened out. Why? I legit, because Listen, I have to call races tomorrow. I, just, looks, I couldn't do it. You had to. He looks ridiculous. Okay. I, that's the problem. Is, that is the point, though. He's so confident. It doesn't matter what he looks like. So we're watching this movie, and you know what my daughter, Grace says, calls him the Fresh Prince of Bad Hair. That's awesome. <laughs> yes. Why is she not here right now? She should run in my seat. Honestly. And uh, she's not wrong. I mean, she, he he looks completely ridiculous. It hasn't aged. I, I feel like five years later, it was already over. Like everything he did style wise in this movie. Perhaps. Yeah. Well, now he just does Adam Sandler movies. He just well he does and he's much better now because he, he doesn't take himself so seriously. He, but he was, was in the new guy as well. He threw that pigeon elbow drop in the back oh, of the uh, record store, and that's all great because he's joking around about his own persona. But at this point, he was taking himself very seriously. This was a sincere movie on his part, yeah. even though it's a I comedy mean, now. At the time, it wasn't. Do you think he legitimately goes? You know, even back then, like granted, he was making money. I mean, this isn't who he is every day. I mean, he's on the stage, he's doing this right. stuff. But I mean, how much of that is stage persona? I mean, legitimately. Right, but he wasn't he wasn't doing this tongue in cheek, is all I'm saying. Yeah. He was he's his character in this are you know how in the, in Mystery Men we said how like the spleen was like if a fart was a person, right? Vanilla ice in this movie is like if Axe body spray was a person. That's vanilla ice in this so movie. So like in your face and oh my God. <laughs> it was sense? just before his time. Yeah. What sense would he be? What scent would he be? Yeah, what I don't, scent? I'm thankful to say I don't know what the scents are of Axe Body Spray enough to answer that question. But it'd be like, I don't know. Phoenix? No. No. Summer's Eve for a different reason. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Testosterone spray. <laughs> Honestly, he's, uh, he's a special guy. I'll give him that. We should get him on the show. I wanted to be him. I really did. Well, you think he'll come on the show? No, I don't think he's going to come on. The, I don't want him on the show. Why not? Because this is a classy show. So is this, <laughs> he's the reason <laughs> you say you don't want him on here? Just he's so he's reason. like, no, no, I'm going to get on. There. No, no, no. Yeah. He's the reason we have John Cena. I guess. If what? His character. No. All right. Let's get no, into no, this no. movie. They shoot a, mu- a music video like we said already, right? Except no one's there. So I don't know. They're right. not. They're performing for no one. They're just so having performing fun. Performing for the camera. He's making love to the camera. He's, okay, but so there is a camera there in the well, reality of this how movie. Did we get the movie. Well, that's okay, but I'm talking about inside right. the movie. The cameras don't exist, right? Uh, so, maybe the camera is just shooting the perspective of we're in the front row. We're the we're the lucky ones in the front row get to watch this. Okay, and there's nobody or maybe else it's obstructing our view. I don't know. Random dance offs and just anywhere, you know, <laughs> random warehouses. That's what I'm saying. It was like there was no one there. They were performing for nobody. And then it, the sprinklers turned on. And then they all, <laughs> which is a running theme. And then they leave and ride through the night, apparently, yeah, on their motorcycles into a town where a bunch of psychopaths live that cut their trees into these giant cones. Right. I was just going to mention that they look very suspicious. Yeah. They're well, all perfect. Looked a lot like Lindenhurst. <laughs> <laughs> But before they get to town, he sees a girl, a girl riding a horse, galloping on a majestic horse. Was this a scene shot by John Woo? Because it looked very John Wooish. This slow motion. <laughs> this is slow mo of slow the horse motion. riding. Yeah, you maybe John Woo was sitting in Hong Kong or wherever John Woo's from, watching this movie over and over and over again, riding his YSR fifty. You know to make this movie great is pigeons. May, maybe, maybe that maybe Vanilla Ice inspired John Woo. We don't know. But I think the most John Woo thing that happened in this scene is the jump over the fence. So, Clint, yeah. is it possible to jump without a ramp over a fence like that? that? Um, if you had like a, a trials bike motorcycle, maybe, and you're sitting there, those guys are amazing. They can jump over like 
things twice as tall as them standing on their bike. So, but this yeah. is not the situation. This guy is going 35 miles an hour down the road and they clearly see the shot from behind him as he's looking at where he's going. There's no ramp. There's no shoulder dip. There's no anything. It's just a fence right. standing there. And then all of a sudden he's flying over this fence on this motorcycle and lands <laughs> it in the grass, turns it sideways, puts it on the <laughs> kickstand and walks over there and is there before she hits the ground after falling off this horse. Right. So it's amazing. Is he powerful enough to bunny hop this thing over a fence? No, <laughs> not a chance. <laughs> Even with all that dancing, he doesn't have those kind of legs. See, here's, here's the thing. You still think that movies have to be realistic. This I don't is the problem. You would think that with all this time watching movies that you'd be over the fact that movies are supposed to be anything more than entertaining. I don't think all movies have to be realistic. I think it depends upon the world that the film has built, the tone that they've established, right? Well, they like, built a world where Vanilla Ice is the coolest man on the planet. You know what? You're right. That in and of itself should mean that nothing. So therefore, is he can bully. He can bunny hop a motorcycle over anything. Okay. He can crawl into girls' bedrooms. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So be quiet. My parents are going to hear you, and then they're running around and chasing each other, and nobody notices. <laughs> he. I don't think it's a good first move to jump the bike in front of a horse, spin out in front of it. I mean, this right. is this is the way Christopher Reeve got paralyzed, right? And just knocks her off the horse. On a motorcycle? No. He was bunny on a hopping horse. Fence. Oh, right. On a horse. He Christopher Reeved this girl and she could have been seriously injured. And then he's like, oh, like, what are you what are you so mad about? What's wrong? Right. Yeah. You just you just knocked me off my horse and you're a total stranger. Right. Not a good first move. You think uh, Janusz Kaminski so was dreamy. a little sad that he couldn't use that sequence later in like Saving Private Ryan or Schindler's List? Yeah, I think he, he burned. Wasted it. On I us. think he burned one. He burned one there on Cool as Ice, and that was one he couldn't go back to. I mean, not till a lot later. You can't. You can't go back to the well like that no. too often. No, it's repeatable. No, it's not good. But yeah, so anyway, they they drive into town. They go to Pee Wee's Playhouse the, with the, the two old serial killers, and they're gonna. Are they? Are they supposed to be bike repair people or are they not? No, or who they're are? not motorcycle repair people. They're just fix it people. But you can't fix anything until you take it all the way apart, right. apparently. Well, has the jam been officially pumped up at this point? <laughs> it's it's funny you bring that up, uh, that specifically pump up the jam, because that's one of my first memories of James Hauser in the first place is he's out on the playground on the tire thing, and he's singing this pump up the jam song. And uh, that's that's one of my first <laughs> memories where I realized who you were and put a name to a face of a person at that point. I have no memory of that whatsoever. It's pretty amazing. And even even after that, we're still friends. Right. That's ama- that's amazing. That's a worse first impression I think than he made on this girl on this horse. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's running. It's it's, it's close. Different. How about the soundtrack in this scene? So. They're, they're there to meet the old, the two old people. And there's like this weird circus music playing in the background. And then it starts going into this weird, like hoot, hoot, hoo, hoot, hoot, hoo, just in the background for this whole scene of dialogue. I'm like it's a vanilla ice movie. They, they should at least have a good soundtrack. Well, good, but come on, you know, really what professional did you just say? soundtrack. It's the vanilla ice movie and it should have good music in it. It should have at least that's not even qualified as like, music if you go back and listen to what was happening in that scene this is what i'm saying he couldn't even he couldn't even a musician couldn't even make a movie whoa, 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 with, whoa, whoa, a, with a decent musician soundtrack. let's just be careful with that i'm i'm being liberal in my use of the word musician but in terms of most people starring in movies vanilla ice is a musician more so than like bruce willis thinks he's a musician more a musician than a, an actor definitely yeah absolutely all right so he he sees this 27 year old high school student who, <laughs> who he wants to get with. I don't know how, how old is he supposed to be? Because he's obviously out of high school. Why is he going after a high school girl? That's never even for reasons. That seems to be the theme of the last couple of movies. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like in the last movie in Scott Pilgrim, they, he just got wrecked for dating the 17 year old girl and they relentlessly just ripped on him. And then here we go to a movie where it's never even like no one bats an eye. And I got to assume he's, 25 himself at this point. I mean, no, it, it makes sense. I suppose. I mean, if you look at the age of the actual people, obviously they'd be that old, but, but he, I think he's playing 25, even in the movie. I mean, he's out of school. He's a successful in quotation marks 
musician. He's driving around with his buddies. He's definitely in his twenties. Right. Why is he chasing after this high school girl? I, I Man, totally missed I that. I, I totally missed that. <laughs> that's just something I thought about because, and maybe it's because I have a 17 year old daughter. Then that's always my first thought is, Hey, who is this guy? <laughs> Why is he trying to pick up this high schooler? It's just, it's just weird. We get to see the family, right? They do the fast forward sequence, which I, I, I just, it it's amazing. It's it was so ob- terrible. It was obnoxious. Thank you. It was obnoxious. They all huddle around the TV to watch this big news story. And so is this what passes for news in this town? Horse girl gets good well, grades news at 11, right? Well, that is whatever it is. I mean, that that's <laughs> kind of weird. Um, you know, th- that's what tells me that this is a little news story fluff piece from a local news channel. This is not like Chicago news. This is like, Hey, the Antioch uh, public access news channel is going to do this thing on this high school girl going to college here and whatever. Um, so like the Witsec guy did not get this guy far enough away from the people <laughs> that they're trying to protect them from that. They're watching the same crummy two watt news channel. Well, it has to be a, a, bigger, a bigger news channel because they're far enough away that the guy's got to like scribble all over a map in the middle of the desert to figure out where they're going. Well, yeah, th- but that's what I'm saying. That's, that's the, the plot miss right there. Right. right. So how to make the national news. Right. <laughs> right. That, that's exactly. Horse it. girl it, gets original. good grades. Yeah. <laughs> because it's odd. And, and I think you said it before, Mel, right? Like plot holes are everywhere. It's still all over the place. Why go on TV? And he's trying very, very hard but very yes. unsuccessfully to cover his face. He's covering his face from the side. The camera's <laughs> not on. Why not just say, you know what? I'm going to pass. Uh, I don't, I don't think I'm going to be, let your mother take this shot. Right. You know, when somebody goes into witness protection, they actually give them a list of stuff they shouldn't do. Like go on national news. In that scene in the living room, I was more interested in trying to figure out what part of super Mario three, the kid was playing based on the music that was in the background than anything that was happening in that scene. Best music of the whole movie. Right, <laughs> the kid's playing super. It's obvious he's playing Super Mario Three, and I'm just sitting there trying to figure out what party was on, based on the music, and I wasn't paying attention to anything that was happening and what they were talking about. I just want to mention the tagline. The tagline for this film: When a girl has a heart of stone, there's only one way to melt it. Just add ice. That makes absolutely no <laughs> sense. <laughs> so how, you how do you melt stone, stone with, with ice? ice? That doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> That was actually a tagline. That was the tagline for the film on the poster and everything. I never saw a poster. You think before we started going to the theater that this would have been hanging on the wall and then one million dollars worth of people looked at it and said, yeah, we'll see that. I want to get a a cool as ice poster for my movie room. I think that would be awesome. Actually, no joke. All right. So vanilla ice huge spike in value of this poster. (laughs) Suddenly they're like, Oh, hold on. Somebody finally wants this thing. This dude's had it listed five cents when a girl dude's had it listed by on eBay for five years. So vanilla ice then shows up at the house with the hardest jacket of all time. This jar, this jacket is hard core. You guys, I want to, I wish I had this jacket. It says on it, danger, deep, down by law, freeze, hype, ice, lust, oh yeah, rolling, sex me up, yep, yep, a question mark, dope, and the letters JK inside a star. Right. Perfect. That Hardest was, jacket of all time. That was all on his jacket? That was yes. all on his jacket. Oh, my God. You can see so all those he can remember his lines. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he looked down at his jacket one time and he said, yep, yep. <laughs> yep, yep. She yeah, girl. Me. That's right. That's right. Yeah, girl. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Imagine this guy showing up to your house to pick up your daughter with that jacket on and the brick haircut. First of all, any guy shows up to my house to pick up my daughter. I'm gonna kill him anyway. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Straight on principle, I have to. It's my job to kill the right first away. boyfriend. It's even, done. Yeah. Yeah. Unless he's driving right. the school matter. bus and yeah. even that I'm not gonna like it. Not gonna like it. No, because that would be weird because she lives more than, you know, closer than two miles from the school and therefore they don't bus. So that would be like a dead giveaway that something's not right. He's got the Johnny Bravo hair, right? Yeah, baby. It's like, it's like he went to the barber and he was like, I don't know. I can't decide between bricks and lightning bolts. And the barber's like, why choose? Let's do both. (laughs) He had to do that himself. Right. I mean, is there a self-respecting barber that would do that for him? At the time? Absolutely. They didn't shave anything into your head back then. Okay. I would say if this guy showed up 
to pick up my daughter, I don't answer the door. I don't, I don't understand why the mom even answers the door to talk to Well, you have to answer the door to see who's there. No, you don't. You see who's there. How are you going to see who's there before you answer the door? You look out the, you look out the window or the doorbell cam and you just go, it take one look at vanilla and ice. And I go, yep, no, not going to happen. What year was this? You have a doorbell camera. All right. Then you look out the window like 1991 style, but either way, all you need is one look at this guy and go, whatever it is. I don't know what he's here for. I'm good. I don't need to open this door. Sorry, sir. I've had enough funky fresh for the day. (laughs) Right. Exactly. Maybe she thought he was Marky Mark or he was selling candy bars. You were well, mistake vanilla ice for Marky Mark, really? The I, funky bunch was nowhere to be found. And honestly, I'll go buy my own candy bar. I'm not buying one from this skeezy guy. He's just trying to take his basketball team to state. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Ice goes outside afterwards, gets shot down by mom, and he stops and he talks to the dirty cops, which sets up this Absolutely. stupid plot, which is that he's mistakenly assumed to be part of this plot that the dirty cops are in because he's talked to them while they're out by the car. Right. When dad first sees that kid, right. He is talking with the police or with the old bad cops. Right. And so this sets in the motion. He's looking for the sugar shack and it sets into motion. <laughs> the sugar, the, shack. the whole stupid, stupid <laughs> plot. Now let's talk. I, Oh my gosh, the sugar shack. We got to talk about the sugar this shack. This scene is, this is how hype this town was right there. <laughs> this is, they needed vanilla ice. This story shows a town where they are so just absolutely depraved that they cut their trees into cones and that they like, they needed this guy to show up and make this place at least half entertaining. What are they trying to say though? They're trying to say that is vanilla ice trying to say, this is the state of music in 1991 until vanilla ice came along that this is what people were listening to. It seems right. No, <laughs> nobody was listening to this. <laughs> This is nobody. There's not a club that existed in the States that was listening to this. Kind, that's not, it's genre list. Whatever they were playing, it was like not music. It was anti music. Well, and it's just a bad performance of an actual song. Oh my gosh. From the seventies. I laughed so hard at what the scene was basically trying to say. Like yes. here comes vanilla ice to save music. Oh, I can't even say that with a straight face <laughs> to save music in this town where people are literally sleeping on the tables. There was like a dude. That yes, was just like, absolutely. Asleep. That is, a, that is a party. This is at the sugar shack. Now maybe oh. it's because we have a sugar shack near us, an actual place called the sugar shack. And it was a completely different, different type of format. Yeah. Um, if you watch when he walks into this place, that initial walk, yeah. there is just a pile of nerds. I mean, straight out of the dictionary, like out of central casting, you come up, if you freeze frame it, they're all got the, the glasses with the tape on them and the, you know, the pocket protectors and the, the button up shirts. And it looked like, like stereotypical nerds. Like there's 40 of them hanging out at the same time at this bar. Like right. a tri Lambda meeting or. Right. That's just the demographic of that town though. I mean, <laughs> there was a lot of the news, the, the big news. Seen. There was obnoxious oversized glasses. Like no one had the right prescription, right? Like, Oh, look at all these nerds. Here comes vanilla ice. To- and here's another plot hole in a town <laughs> full of nerds like this. Yeah. It, how is it still news that some horse girl is going to college? <laughs> That's not news in a town That's full true. of nerds. It's true. But this is, this is the scene where, <laughs> or was it a shame? I can't piece? even I can't. She's only going to college. Oh man. Oh, uh, maybe it was, maybe it was a hit piece, <laughs> right? It was a takedown. This is, this is the scene though, where vanilla ice starts to win over horse girl. Yep. In 30 seconds. No, not even 30 seconds, two seconds. She's already like up on, right? Him. He Ow. unplugs all the instruments, but his microphone still works. Right. And <laughs> then he starts busting. What does he say? I'm going to bust out some dope lyrics or something like that. And uh, some funky fresh rhymes, and the girl is immediately like hooked. Hooked. Yeah. This is this is the most positive thing I think I have to say about this movie so far. Is it's a stunningly accurate portrayal of the type of guys that horse girls go for. My so. wife is a horse girl, so I'm yeah. trying to think of uh, <laughs> trying to think of PG things to say to that. I'm trying comment. to think of how I relate here. <laughs> wow, we're really. Uh, I don't think cri- I don't today. I don't think she's a horse girl. Not like this girl. Uh, she's in the process of buying a horse. Uh oh. Yeah. All right. Well, got to work on my funky fresh rhymes. These moves that that he like how he won her over would get you would get you tased nowadays. This is pepper spray. This is complete one hundred percent like over the board of harassment. Yeah, this oh, yeah. Is, this yeah. is tase 
maced, shot, everything. You mean when he? Are you talking about when he grinds her into the floor in front of her boyfriend, in front of everybody? Yeah. It was just randomly. What was it? Just dancing. Yeah. What was Catherine Morris doing in this movie? Definitely before Me Too. Who? She was the actress and who played Tom Cruise's wife, Minority Report. She was one of the girls in her little, in her little, in her little flock of girls. Yes, that was her. Yes. Oh man, you caught that was a good catch. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't even notice that. She didn't really speak much. She smiled. So this is another Steven Spielberg connection we have in this movie. <laughs> yes. The guy that shot Minority Report probably said to Spielberg, "Hey, you know, there was this girl back when I did Cool as Ice." <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> We should get her for Minority Report because she's perfect for she's it. She's perfect for, the, for it. Yeah. She rode in a yeah. car. She rode in a car. So <laughs> can we talk about the fight scene that happens outside? The My Sugar favorite Shack? part of the movie. It is? Yes. Vanilla Why? Ice getting punched. But well, he didn't get punched in this first scene. <laughs> he, got, he got punched at. He got he, punched at. Uh, he did get hit once. Uh, he got hit he? back. He, he oh. Got, yeah. He got yeah. hit to the ground. Great. And then he's great. You enjoyed that? I enjoyed that so much. It, I was cheering. I, I've never been so happy since yeah. the Cubs won the World Series. <laughs> great camera angles. How do you think the fight choreography was? As about as good as Psycho Hikers was. <laughs> so fantastic. What's funny to me is like between each move, Vanilla Ice paused about two seconds. Yes, yes. Paused <laughs> like for two seconds. Between each move so he could remember what he was supposed to do. I had a, He memorized his fights. He as good as he memorized his script. Right. He's like, all right, grab the arm. Okay. Take a breath. Punch him in the face. All right. Take a breath. <laughs> I had the soundtrack from Teenage Mutant and Ninja Turtles going through my head with Go Ninja. Go, go Ninja. ninja go. Go. Yeah, I get that. I get that. That's where we learned to fight. Because why can this guy suddenly just use karate? It's from the it's from the turtles. Right? Yeah, obviously. Obviously. That's where he learned it. We also well, he had lightning bolts on the other side of his head. So, I that's mean. That's true. Quick backtrack. Yeah. Back, a very dumb backtrack. But back to the beginning. Yeah. Bobby Brown from the music video Cherry Pie gave him his number. The blonde. Oh really? Yeah, that was the chick from Cherry Pie. That music video from Monique. No, Monique. No, no, that the. Well, in the movie, that yeah, was her name. Yeah, Monique. Monique. I apologize. Sorry. That's the Cherry Pie girl. That's the Cherry. That's Pie her girl. name too. Her name is actually Monique. Bob was so I bored it was with the Cherry Pie girl, like it's <laughs> on her driver's license. Bob was so bored with what was happening in this movie that he noticed the, the Cherry Pie girl and this girl in the background <laughs> from Minority Report. That's not <laughs> and true. He just was looking past whoever was talking. He was looking straight past to them because he didn't care. I love that. <laughs> Not at all it. true. Vanilla Ice saves her. So this is, the, this is another great thing. So she leaves, you know, ditches the boyfriend after he's being a jerk in the parking lot and is walking down the middle of the street. Right. And is confused why there's a car well, behind we, her. That, that is the best part. She's walking down <laughs> the middle of the street. It had just rained apparently, but it wasn't raining earlier. But right. The road is wet now and she's not wet. Nope. Did anybody so see the spray truck? There was yeah, a truck. Yeah. The oh, truck that went around the water her, truck. Yes. Yeah, yeah, the water truck. I, I actually. I, why is there a water truck spraying the street? I, I don't know why. You know, Wash you spray the a water off the street. <laughs> <laughs> you would spray a water truck on like a dirt road, but that was definitely asphalt. You're right. I remember that now because I said something to my wife as we're watching it. This is another movie, by the way, that my daughter sat and watched next to me the whole time. She nice. did not get out. Did she approve it? Uh, it, every time I looked at her, she was smiling in horror. Um, so again, like complete disbelief of what was going on on the screen, but she did not get up and leave and she is free to do so. So I would say that's semi approval at, at, at least. So yeah. I don't think she's going to watch it again, but I, I always laugh when I look at her, this girl's face. She's like so confused. Yeah. Why is there a car in the street that yeah. I'm trying to walk down the middle of? Right. And then like, she just doesn't move to the side and try and let the car go. And then the car moves over and is following her. That well, this would is be what creepy. This weird. is what you get right. for a uh, dating an ass hat who wears socks with his penny loafers. I, <laughs> I guess we're, we're not, we shouldn't expect so much out of somebody that's into vanilla ice. Was she into him yet? Yeah, I guess she was. Yeah, yeah she, they just, she, she was just already doing done, the dancing and they stuff. They just got yeah. done assaulting each other yeah. on the dance floor. Right. Well, that exactly. was her ploy to get her to get her back to get her plan. Oh, so back. maybe she's not into him yet. Looky, I guess looky and cat's black bookie. That's true because when he drives her home on the motorcycle, he says, "Hey, you know what's up?" And she turns him down, right? Right. Because he has that stupid line, "Man, dissed again," right? Right. Which. <laughs> <laughs> like, holy cow, this has never happened. Now twice? What the heck? I, I I wrote this down when I watched it. I feel like after that point, I'm like, okay, this is, it dawned on me, this is the plot of the movie. This entire movie is a character study of Vanilla Ice as he tries to determine whether or not he was dissed or who he dissed and if they dissed him. Well, she did steal his wallet and 
ended up having that number and ID his driver's license. True, yeah. and That's what I'm saying. His Ralph's club card. He doesn't like to be dissed. No. no. Who does? No. And so what does he what does he do to get back at her? He pulls off the skeeviest move of all time, maybe the following morning. Climbing, climbing her, bedroom. In her bedroom window. Yeah. But she sleeps. Once again, how does this not get you shot, tased, or maced? She didn't even scream. Yeah, so he call, he crawls into her room and puts ice in her mouth while right. she's asleep. Starts dripping ice water and puts ice in her mouth while she's sleeping. She wakes up. She's cool with this. <laughs> cool as ice. I did not meet girls like this. Just puts ice okay. right in her mouth. Certainly not, not as a metaphorically speaking, literally ice. <laughs> right. Like yeah, real ice, not yeah. not a part of cool as ice, vanilla ice. But it worked so well, I was like, well, I'm gonna try this. So I actually tried this with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to put ice uh in her mouth while she was asleep and I got punched right in the face. That so sounds about right. It does not work in real life. Did you tell her to stop collaborate and listen? No, I didn't. Probably should have. I think it's the haircut. I think you need to have that kind of haircut in order to be able to administer the ice treatment while sleeping. Yeah. They get interrupted by the little brother. Yeah. When you guys are done making the sex. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I could not stop laughing at that. <laughs> when are you guys done making the sex? Yeah. You take me for a bike ride? But then he leaves and he gets sprayed by the sprinklers, which, again, was another favorite part of the movie to me. It was like anytime he gets punched or sprayed by the right. sprinklers. I mean, they need to wash him off of him. <laughs> And then what's great is he's, he, he runs around the front and then he sits there and he thinks about it. Like it's so hard. He thinks so hard about what happened and he laughs to himself. And I just imagine him in his head going dissed by the mist. This guy is such a doofus. And what's so funny to me, I think it's funny that the entire plot hinges on the fact that he's a doofus. As a kid, when you watched this and you were younger, did you, I mean, I know you watch this now and you watch this with the intent to hate it because, you know, it's fun to hate things that are odd. And I did, I didn't really not want to be vanilla ice when you were a kid. I liked vanilla ice when we I were, was for like a year. I was, when I was be 11. a rapper, man. That was my career. Path. Yeah. I was going to be a rapper at some point. But, so like legitimately, I wanted to be this guy. I would say it's not true to say that I watched this with the intent to hate it because I, I didn't, I went in with an open mind and the movie does it to itself. <laughs> so guys coming up after that was another incredible scene. We'll just call it the construction site date. Oh. All right. I don't I honestly don't even know what to say about this construction site, desert, middle of field date thing. Right. They have going. Is on. that what they did? I mean, I wasn't old enough at the time to be dating high school girls at but 25. Would you, just do spend the day doing parkour around a abandoned construction site, or is that a normal date? Uh, yeah, or, girl. Weren't they grinding <laughs> in the desert at one point? Yes. Oh, there was like they were jumping around the construction site. Yeah. They're making out on his motorcycle. He tries to ride a horse. She uh, rides the motorcycle. They're right. You know, you know usually around in the field are, uh, the, <laughs> are beneficial yeah. to the film. This one just completely fell apart. Yeah, they're like hosing each other off. They're having the most like the most wonderful time. Vapid conversation, right? So like tell me what it's like. What's like? Like having like a family and like a brother, yo. Right? I'm like, dude, this is this is the kind of conversationalist he is. Solving world peace, honestly. <laughs> that was I mean, his first dates go, I feel like you could do a lot better than that. But she seemed totally, they literally spent the whole day there. He, he, she walks out in the morning, gets on the motorcycle, and he drives her back in the dead of night. Right. They nope. spent the entire day at the construction site. That sounds well, awesome. The question is, why was construction not going on? I was, yeah, there was the no, weekend? there was no, I mean, there was the pounding, weather. that pounding machine that was, thing that yeah. came up later, but yeah. Vanilla Ice shut the whole thing down. <laughs> he contacted the form. He said, look, man. I got this, I got this girl. girl. She's a high schooler. I don't need anybody around. Oh God. And well, you got to figure that first night at the club was probably Friday night and they're going out somewhere and then they're at the sugar shack Saturday night. So this has got to be Sunday. It's Sunday. They're not working. Okay. All right. We'll go. With, it's Sunday. So my, uh, my 11 year old son. Okay. Who is, would have been my age. Yes. At the time this movie came out, wanted to be vanilla ice, watched this movie with me and, and thought it was so cool. And th no, he didn't. Damn this, <laughs> Is a direct quote. I, I wrote this down word for word what he said. He didn't say anything. The entire movie was silent. Was it word to your mother? No. Oh. <laughs> we get to the construction scene and he speaks for the first time in the entire movie. And he just says, 
this movie's just about random crap. <laughs> he says, I go here, I go there, I do this, I get that. That's, that was uh, his review of the movie. That's the Siskel and Ebert review, actually. <laughs> that's from an 11-year-old. He recognized that the movie was just a bunch of random crap. He is much more in tune with reality than I was at that age then. Yeah. Or or this age. Or this age. And then we get the what I call the King Triton scene, right? The 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 dad, the dad talk on the bed with the daughter, right? About, I don't want you to see this guy. And then he tells the story of, you know, his true identity and all this stuff. And it was like, was that the birds and bees talk to? Well, it's the King Triton scene from little mermaid, right? Oh. All they needed was like a giant statue of, of Prince Eric or whatever in the room or, or vanilla ice in this case. And it would have been basically the same thing. And honestly, I was a little bit mad at Michael gross. He had no business trying to class up the joint with some decent acting in that scene. <laughs> this is this is this is cool as ice. We don't need that stuff here. This is his audition for Tremors. Honestly, this is before Tremors. I'm like, Mike, you're trying way too hard for this movie, dude. Collect your paycheck and go home, brother. <laughs> this is before Family Ties, too. I mean, no, it's it, after oh, Family it Ties. After? Yeah. After. Oh, yeah. Family Ties was in the 80s. And I don't know. He maybe he just was really needing some work. And, you know, he was a working actor. And I'm not going to disrespect the guy for grabbing a paycheck, but. I didn't appreciate him actually trying in that scene. <laughs> How dare you do your job? Stop it. Honestly, they have their big breakup. So the next morning she tells him, you know, he's pedaling his bike backwards and she's saying, I don't want to hang out with you anymore. We're done. And, uh, vanilla ice is not happy. He's so sad. That, She's doing the right thing. Right. He's so sad that they're not going to make any ice ice babies that he has to, <laughs> drive off into the desert to have a whole motorcycle montage where he sits there and thinks, thinks about for stuff. a day, like a whole day of just thinking in different positions, like different places. Right now he's in the chair at the, at the serial right. killer's house, still right. just thinking, right. Little brother walks up. Can we go for that ride now? <laughs> his hair is all dope, you know? It's right. Amazing. He or just, he was on dope when he did his hair either way. They just said like the camera's just rotating 360 or he's sitting on the motorcycle like this. Then he's sitting on the motorcycle like that. And he's got to think about stuff, man. I can't believe this girl doesn't want to be with me. I got to sit on this couch and think about it some more. It's really hard for him to think. It's why it takes him all day. I feel like they could have crammed at least one more motorcycle montage into this movie. Well, you know, they, they ended up having a kid later. They did. They did. Was cool nice as ice big, too. Nice big tattoo. It said no regrets. <laughs> Jeez. In uh, cool as ice too, the un the unreleased sequel, it was about vanilla ice and and horse girl's kid. Right. Okay. You know, becomes a carny and. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's just this is what I'm saying. This is what the movie's about. It was just Did him she sitting still on the go couch. To college. That's the question. Was I dissed? Did she diss me? This is what this is all he's concerned about. This is what he's thinking about on the couch while he's sitting there during this scene, right before the kid is kidnapped. But no, he does take the kid for the ride around town on the motorcycle, right? Because he's way cooler than Dick. Way cooler. I mean, sorry. No, no, Nick. no. He's, Nick. he's very. Much <laughs> oh yeah, 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 Nick. This kid is playing Tech Mobile, and at that moment, I was like, "This kid is the coolest character in this movie." It's not Vanilla Ice. He's rocking Mario. Super Mario three, he's playing tech mobile. I'm like, I want to hang out with this kid more than, more than the star of this movie. Right. Yeah. He does this whole thing. He get, takes this kid around mm-hmm. and then now all of a sudden, uh, the kid comes up missing. It's like, Oh, I saw him. I saw him with him and earlier he hands, today. And he hands the dad, the, uh, the yeah. envelope with the, somehow uh, he gets the envelope to hand the dad from the right. bad on the porch. cops again. On the porch. Right. Well, this is what I'm saying. He's, I mean, you hand a guy an envelope or a box. You're not the Amazon guy. You're just handing a box. Well, why even pick it up and hand it? Up? This is what I'm saying. The whole plot is dependent on him being a doofus. And he's like, trying to be here you go. He's trying to be a helpful guy. I guess. Yeah, Dad. Here you go. He's just misunderstood. <laughs> he's been still in all this, like in all those movies he did. He's just misunderstood. Why take the tape to the police? She takes the tape to Vanilla Ice to be like, my brother got kidnapped. Here's the tape, and this dude breaks that thing down like he's Tommy Lee Jones in The Fugitive. Yeah, okay, so right? That noise. <laughs> That's, That's what that I'm noise. saying. Rewind. Play it back. He was, he was thinking of, he was making a he, remix. He was thinking of a beat. He's like, I could use that beat in my yeah, next That's lick, exactly dude. what it was. That's exactly. You guys are right. It was a remix. He was Play just it like, back. <laughs> because he couldn't even remember where he, she's like, wait a minute. That's where I was thinking earlier. Yeah. I know where he's at. Right. <laughs> and he just sitting there. But where was that place? I took you. And she goes, the construction site. It was yesterday, vanilla. And you couldn't remember where you he took did a her. whole day of thinking. 
Well, they jumped around all day. Like they went and hosed each other off. They went to a construction site and then out to a desert. They grind on the desert. Back to the construction site. I mean, I can see where it would be confusing. Yeah, and then to further prove he's a genius, they get to the construction site and has he delivers that incredible line. Just because we can't hear doesn't mean it's not here. (laughs) Well, just because we can't hear the thing doesn't mean they're yeah no um, and that's. They're looking at him. All right. So these yeah. guys are on motorcycles out here in the cul-de-sac of this construction site where there's apparently five houses under construction at the same time uh, instead of finishing any portion of them, which that could be true if you're doing a whole big uh, construction. They got several crews maybe, but they're inside this one nearly finished house that has windows and everything and, but unfinished wall sections as well. Um, and uh, they're shining a flashlight out at each other, and they're not noticed. It's completely dark. There's no power. And, hey, there's a flashlight going on in that window up there. You know what? I just thought of this. The first day when they were actually at the construction site, the the Sunday, as we're calling it, Yeah. they had that uh, post-pounder thing going, right. which means that the site was active, but nobody said anything to them about just kind of hanging out at the job site all day. Would you say, so, saying. Would you say something to Vanilla Ice if you saw it? Absolutely. <laughs> What would you say to him? Uh, use the porta potty over there. This one's for us to uh, take a dump in. <laughs> <laughs> I think the opposite happened. I think they said, "Hold on, this is Vanilla Ice wants to use the site. All right, everybody, shut everything down. Get Johnny out of the crane. That's get everybody. Cool. Get That's how cool he was. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. He was cool as ice. I mean, he's he has the ability to melt stone. <laughs> how how do you and, think and about heart of stone? Wouldn't that be the opposite with ice? What do you think about the rescue itself and how they? how they were able to rescue them. He crashes a motorcycle through a wall. Hold on. (laughs) This is a construction site where before it was sturdy enough for them to swing through the two by four and everything and do this parkour montage, right? That they're doing. But yet when it comes time to rescue them, they all rode away. They rode away somehow. And now they start making some noise in this house. And apparently over the noise of the motorcycles, they were figured out that that's where he's at. And we're going to go up there and we're going to ride through this one section of finished drywall yep. wall that has no studs in it for like nine feet. So like that's, it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, yeah, you can absolutely ride through a section of drywall, but you're not going to find drywall without wood in it. It's if the, uh, <laughs> if the Kool-Aid he... man uh, was a douchebag. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he crashed into it, came out perfectly good looking on the other side. Right. His hair was still on his point. Hair, his bricks were still in his head. Well, I, here's the thing. There's a lot of product to make that happen. It's a lot of product. They have this big moment, but then I timed it. The fight scene is 30 seconds long. Okay. They literally fight for 30 seconds and the movie's over. Yeah. It was like, well, it's kind of the plot of the movie. It was 30 seconds and it was over. That's true. Although you should be happy because he actually got punched in the face twice. I know it was glorious. (laughs) Every time I cheered, I was like, yeah, get him. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I knew that they were going to win, but I want them to get hit a few times. Here's the question, though. When you have these ruthless uh, kidnappers that have guns and yeah, like that, and horseshoe haircuts, why why would they not use the gun? Why would they like yeah. get into fist fights when they can just turn around and go pop and it's done? Man, imagine how much different of a movie this had been if they had driven through the wall and they all just got shot. <laughs> Perfect. Awards. Awards. They would have won the Razzie that time. If he, if Vanilla Ice had gotten to act out a death scene, could you imagine how great that would have been? It would have been pretty good. It would have been pretty. I good. mean, it would have been horrible, but how great would it have been to watch Vanilla Ice try and do a death scene? I'm ice, ice baby. <laughs> would he have melted? Would he have just melted? Oh, that would be great. <laughs> he just turned just into a puddle melted. on the ground in I bad guess, clothes. I guess he really was cool as ice. Like the cop smoking a cigarette in the back. Right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Would the coroner guys take away all the blankets? That's right. As well? <laughs> oh my gosh. And then the, the, to me, the, the doofus exclamation point on this entire movie is when the girl comes up to talk to him at the end, you know, she's like, I want to come with you or whatever. And he t- puts the sunglasses on in the dead of night. Right. <laughs> he puts these sunglasses on and he goes, well then let's geo. <laughs> Like, right, it's he looks like such a doofus putting those sunglasses on. And I forgot something, and then turns around and jumps, jumps, jumps over jumps, the yeah. Corvette. Jumps yeah. over the Corvette. Yeah, um, I want to say there's there's too much of a gap between the ground and the Corvette to oh, be an effective you would, ramp. You would absolutely. I mean, the the front edge of that Corvette is higher than the 
center point of the tire on the motorcycle, they would be eating windshield. That would be amazing. <laughs> that would be another great death scene potential right there. Just Imagine if the they had done that. And all three of them just explode. But he has the ability to bunny hop over fences. So yeah, potentially he just bunny hopped over the Corvette and he never actually jumped it. He just like, oh, hey, here we go. If you could magically, he pushed the magic fly button on the motorcycle. If you couldn't see the ramp through the windshield, then I would say that's probably what happened. But <laughs> since you could literally see the ramp through the windshield, it was pretty obvious what, what had happened there. But I actually, I actually thought that was, that was a, a cool way to end it. So there, there's some, you praise. were just happy that they ended it. There's some praise I'll throw at the movie. I feel so bad that, that we're, that the Clint really likes this movie and we're just taking a giant. No, no, by all means, it. that's what this is all about because that's Here's what the thing. you guys did to me a couple weeks ago. I really like this movie too. <laughs> I would watch this movie again. I, I think it's awesome as a comedy. It, oh yeah. <laughs> it wasn't supposed to be a comedy. Right. I, but I'd laughed harder than I laugh at some movies that are supposed to be comedies. That's true. Yeah. yeah. No, I, uh, I truly, like I said, as a kid, I, I don't know what it was. I wanted to be this guy. Yeah. You know, I was never even close to being a cool guy. I was, you know, I'm funny. I'm right. Got friends and stuff like that, but I was never like the cool guy. I'll give you 20 bucks to do the vanilla ice hairdo from cool as ice right now. 20 bucks and you pay the barber. I will do that. All right, let's, we'll go right <laughs> after this. Mike is down at the shop. I don't need to be there. We'll go right over to Great Clips. And you know, you're you're already a small They're business not- owner, so you're not having to give up any kind of job or anything to cut that hair like no, that. So no, it's easy. My boss will not fire me, and it'll grow back super fast. Not like Horse Girl, who apparently gave up her college degree to go be a groupie for yeah. Vanilla Ice. You don't know movie. that she didn't still go to college. They could have eh, you know, what do you think happened? relationships ah. work with guys like that. I think she's working at Walmart within five years of this. And has three kids. I think she she's made working at a gas station. Right <laughs> How can she be so smart and make such terrible life decisions? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. All right, boys, it's time to move on to the awards section of our podcast. Um, didn't have a lot of praise for this movie, but I do love it. I think this movie does rule and it belongs. Uh, it belongs in its place as a unintentional, hilarious comedy of 1991. And so we're going to give it some flowers right now, starting with the Will Patton award. Guys, as you know, this is an award we give out to somebody that was in a small role, but was really bringing the heat. I got this one. And, uh, well, then you're going to kick us off, Clint. Who you got for the Will Patton Award? Little brother all day. Yeah, that's who I got, too. The little brother was awesome. Undisputable. I was going to say Michael Gross. Michael Gross. Okay. Serial killers. The The serial killers were damn good, too. You're right. Um, The little brother is played by Victor DiMaria, who was actually a pretty successful child actor in the early nineties was in the sandlot and a couple of other movies and didn't do anything for a long time. But then this year came back in a movie called death rider in the house of vampires. So intriguing come back for the little brother from cool as ice. Be on lookout for that one. Death rider and what death rider in the house of vampires. That's going to be episode 1,904. (laughs) I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what Victor's doing these days, but he was great. All right, so we got two votes for for the little brother, one for Michael Gross and the serial killer uh, old couple. Top three performances. What do you guys think? Performances. Michael yeah. Gross, the kid, and Penny Loafers. Penny Loafers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for me, I had at number three, I had the horse. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, number two, Michael Gross. And then number one, Vanilla Ice. Not because he had a good performance, but because he's the reason that this movie is enjoyable to yeah. me. Right? Well, I, I got to put uh, my order differently. Vanilla sure. Ice, obviously, is going to be my three spot because okay. like he's entertaining. It yes. is. It doesn't matter what you're watching a movie for. Are you entertained? Right. Is it taking you someplace? Right. That's that's what you're going for. Um, absolutely. I don't think anybody else has plays that douche so well. I mean, like legitimately, he did a great job of playing a douchebag. Um, <laughs> like an early Justin Bieber. I don't know who Justin Bieber is. He seems like Justin Bieber's dad in this movie, basically. I mean, I know who he is, so that was the wrong thing to say, but I don't know any of his work or I haven't followed anything to know why everybody hates him. I just figure it's like cold play. Everybody just thinks it's cool to hate something, so they do it. But uh and that's I think what I think you guys were doing. It's cool to hate vanilla ice. No, I think uh I think he's three. Uh the two spot, Michael Gross, he did an amazing job at everything he did in that. But like the best actors are the old timer serial killers, like Jay <laughs> said. Like legitimately, <laughs> those guys played such a amazing uh couple 
you know, like he, he does the fixing. She does the nothing will get fixed without me. I just, I just like the back and forth. Yeah. They, they were, I don't, I don't want to say they were good. They were interesting. Every time I, they were on screen, I was watching yes, them with watching like, to see what you're missing. What is, in the what is happening? Yeah. <laughs> I got to say my number yeah. one. Yeah. Which also happens to be the biggest douche in the film. Yeah. Is the uh, the water truck driving down the road <laughs> <laughs> trying to wash the uh, the vanilla ice out of town? All right, he's like, I got to clean off this movie. This is this is just a mess. <laughs> what do you got for the other two? No, no, that was it. That was just it. The, just yeah, the, the only award you're giving out. Okay, All right. perfect. All right, well then it's time for top five quotes. So as always, gentlemen, I'll go through the top five quotes of the movie, and then afterwards, if there's one that you feel like I missed, go ahead and throw it in there. But at number five, we've already talked about it. Then let's G O is my pick for the number five quote, and it's made better by the sunglasses. I don't know if it would have been memorable without him putting on those stupid sunglasses. Number four, when Villanilla when, <laughs> when Vanilla said. I'm gonna go across the street and sling a song. <laughs> I had to replay that three times to make sure to make sure I right. knew what he was saying. Was he saying sing a sh- or sh- sing a schlong, sling a schlong, uh, sling a schlong, sling a song? No, he said sling, sling, sling a, a schlong. schlong. You had me rolling when he said see you later, Dick. Our- <laughs> that, that was that's mine. It's not on James's list, but that's a good one. It's not. But number three was drop that zero and get with the hero. Come yeah, on. That's that classic was, from this one. That's a good one. And uh, number two, uh, I was hanging out with Kat, who, you know, the chick that drives the horse. <laughs> <laughs> Your daughter. Oh, my gosh. The chick that drives the horse. And then number one. Number one is actually, I thought, of all the times he tried to sound cool and burn people just fell flat. But the one good burn I thought that he actually had was at the very end of the movie where he said, I hope you like being a biker girl because you're never going to see me or this car again. And Vanilla says, imagine that right before they drive and take off. And I thought that was good. So that was my number one line. Uh-huh. Any, anything that I missed besides the, uh, see you later. Dick. See you later, Dick. Yeah. That oh was... no, Nick. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are you done making sex with my sister? Had me rolling too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Any others guys? It wasn't necessarily a line, but it was on the screen when it said the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, I don't know where to leave this movie or what we can say about Vanilla Ice. He never made another film as a starring role. He's taken over uh, a spot in Adam Sandler's movies as being like a uh, a little bit player, and I think that's a good spot for him. And I'm glad he's kind of come back into the we, – He had a whole uh, – We need a John Cena – Vanilla Ice buddy cop movie. No one is asking for that. Literally I'm, I'm no just one. one. I just heard somebody just, ask for Just it. Vanilla Ice. I'm asking. 25% of the people in this room are asking. <laughs> I want to see that. So for all the people we've polled, 25% of everybody wants to see that movie. If you haven't seen Cool as Ice, and I'm going to assume that there's a lot of people listening to this podcast that have never seen this movie, go and see Cool as Ice. It is not a good movie. It is, in fact, very much a bad movie, but it's a bad movie that rules because it is hilarious. Yes. It's entertaining. It's very entertaining. All right. That's going to wrap it up for us on this episode of Bad Movies Rule. We're going to be back next week with our first Stallone movie yet on the show. I'm excited for this because... Growing up, I wasn't a big Vanilla Ice guy like Clint, but I was a big Stallone fan. We're talking about Judge Dredd next week on Bad Movies Rule. We'll see you then.